Uh, my name is Phil Perthree. I'm a research geologist and the chief of the environmental geology section at the Arizona Geological Survey. Today is May 3rd, 2011. It's the 124th anniversary of the Great Sonoran Earthquake, um, which, which uh, ruptured about 60 miles of the Earth just south, south of the Arizona-Mexico border, southeast of Douglas. Um, that was the largest earthquake by far that's been in and around Arizona. And uh, it caused quite a bit of damage across southeastern Arizona and was felt very widely, including in the Phoenix area. And even according to the stories, it caused church bells to ring in Mexico City, which is a long, long ways away. Uh, based on the work that geologists have done more recently, we estimate the size of this earthquake to have been about 7.4, 7.5, so it was a really large earthquake. Um, obviously, at that time, southeastern Arizona was a pretty lightly populated area, and uh, there was substantial damage to some small towns down in Mexico, and people were killed there. Uh, no one was killed in Arizona, but uh, there was damage to including cracks in the bell tower of the San Javier Mission in south of Tucson, so and uh, it caused damage and rock falls and other phenomena um, pretty well all the way across southeastern Arizona, even though we're quite a long ways away from it. In Tucson. As I said, there were several several communities in Mexico that were negatively impacted by this event, including a, a number of 70-some fatalities in a, in a church that collapsed in the town of Bavispe in, in uh, Sonora, Mexico. We have done uh, extensive geologic studies of this fault zone, as, uh, as have others. And generally, we think that it's had been at least 10,000 years and possibly quite a bit longer than that since a similar earthquake had occurred. So what we think we know about young faults in Arizona is that they, they can, obviously they can generate large earthquakes like this 1887 earthquake, but they, they do this quite infrequently. If the San Andreas Fault, for example, would rupture every few hundred years generally, these are going to be rupturing on 10,000 to 100,000 year time frames. So really large earthquakes, but really infrequent events on individual faults. In this 1887 earthquake, basically it ruptured and it's, we're, we, li we live in the southern and central Arizona as part of the basin and range province. And the basins are the valleys and the ranges are the mountains, obviously. and what has formed the, the landscape in this area primarily is faulting along the edges of the mountains that drop the valleys down. And this earthquake in 1887 in, in Sonora was a, was a great example of what goes on in these events because the valley was dropped down um, up to as much as maybe 12 or 15 feet in places relative to the, to the mountain range in a, in a really abrupt across this fault zone, the valley dropped down. and. And as a result of that, we formed what we call fault scarps, which is uh, scarps in the landscape that form as a result of faulting events. And uh, there's some pretty impressive pictures, even 100 years after the event, in some places, the fault scarp is very, very obvious. Well, if we think the chances of another earthquake like that 1887 event occurring on that fault for the, for the foreseeable future are extremely almost infinitesimally low. But we have, based on our studies of Arizona and surrounding areas, we know, we believe we know that there are many, many other faults that have been active over the past tens or hundreds of thousands of years. And so, so we wouldn't focus our attention on this particular fault as an earthquake risk, but there clearly are other faults like this fault that could generate large earthquakes. So, as we consider the seismic hazard in Arizona, we need to know where these quaternary faults, these young faults, are and how they're distributed across the state. And that is one way to view the hazard in areas that have more of these faults are going to be more likely to have earthquakes. Based on that information, the most dangerous place in Arizona is up in northwesternmost Arizona, um, actually bas basically south of St. George, Utah, in that area. Uh, the Western Grand Canyon area because there are the most active faults and, and, a and a good number of faults in that area. 
The Flagstaff area also has a large number of faults. We think those faults are not, none of those faults individually have, are active very frequently, but there are a lot of faults. So that makes that area also an area of concern for earthquake potential. And then of course, Yuma doesn't have much in the way of Young Fault's right in the Yuma area, but it's close enough to the San Andreas system and certainly has been impacted historically by large earthquakes in the, in the, along the San Andreas system and the Salt and Trough and the Colorado River Delta area, so uh, including a, an event last year that, that was felt quite strongly in Yuma. So th those, those are the kinds of th the way we see it. Other parts of Arizona, including coming down through the north of Prescott and down to through the Verde Valley and on, on down Roosevelt Lake, that area, um, there are a reasonable number of quaternary faults there. So that's another area of a little bit lower hazard, but still. Um, and then we have pretty pretty broad areas of Arizona, most of central and southwestern Arizona, where we, where we haven't recognized very many quaternary faults. So based on the faults, uh, we would think those areas are, are lower um, seismic hazard.